Hello everyone, in today's video we'll be taking a look at the cruise and autopilot of this uh, lovely ATR42. Now originally I was going to make this just three videos, but it looks like it's going to get a little bit longer just on account of the fact there's just so much going on. But let's go ahead and get started. So take a look around inside. Uh, we're getting ourselves on the vertical climb here. Uh, we've got the engine set to climb mode. Uh, we've got ourselves set to notch on the throttle. Everything is climbing nicely. Uh, we've got a couple different things. And the auto flight control system on this aircraft is relatively straightforward. There's a bunch of uh, little kind of hmms, but at the same time, there's also a lot of things that are fairly intuitive. Uh, but the first one I'm gonna mention is the fact that you got this lovely speed hold button. Um, this is an emergency flight path kind of descent sort of a button. So uh, don't accidentally press that set of IAS. I just need to get that out of my way now because everybody wants to know what that's for. So the first things first is that when we're using the auto flight control system is you actually have a couple different displays we're going to be interested in. First one, of course, is going to be our actual cockpit. By the way, to pop this up, you can just hold down the alt, right, the right alt and click on this and it pops up like that. You're going to notice across the top of our PFD, we have all the different modes. So we have our flight director of warning that just tells us that it's engaged. We also have this little arrow to say that we're the current people in control of the AFCS. Now, if you look over here, you'll notice that the our co-pilot here does not, oh, that shouldn't be there, um, basically would not have it. And if you want to actually switch which autopilot system you're on, you have the coupling button over here. It's actually kind of a neat little switch there, uh, kind of alternating between those two different modes, but these two are synchronized for us. The next thing we're going to notice is if you look across the top, you have all the different modes that are currently activated. Uh, right now we're in IAS mode with altitude select armed, um, just like you're probably familiar with many Garmin electronics. Anything that's green means that it's on, anything that is blue means it is armed. So in this case, green autopilot, green flight director, green IAS, green LNAV means all these different settings are currently enabled. So we're going to be experiencing the functionality of that. Uh, the other thing you'll notice too is whenever we have any items selected, the selected item will always appear over the particular item that it's linked to on the PFD. So in this particular case, uh, if we were on a heading of 237 degrees, you can see that that's been selected and marked both in blue. You can also see if we look at our altitude, right now it's selected at 12,000 feet is where we're going to top off today. And you can also see that our selected airspeed is 169 knots, which is up here in the top left. You also notice come down here, and this is a really important point, by the way, is this is our current navigational source that we're driving our LNAV with. What did I just say? Uh, what I'm saying is when you are operating this aircraft and you're flying by the GPS or you're flying by ILS or VOR, you need to make sure this agrees with what you're currently operating. Since I'm flying off the FMS right now, you can see very clearly that it says FMS and my next waypoint selected is GDM, VOR, Gardner Mass, and you can see what bearing it is as well as what distance it is. Now, this is a really important point because when we go to do an ILS approach, we need to tell this system that we intend to do an ILS approach. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go float over here and I'm just gonna point out to change the navigational source, you have this switch right here. Or we have the two flight management systems and then we have the VOR and the ILS switch here. Don't accidentally click this when you're on navigation mode. If you feel the need to change this, uh, especially for like an ILS approach or something like that, what I would actually recommend doing is pressing heading sync to synchronize the heading, selecting the heading button, changing this, then selecting the nav or approach or back course, uh, depending exactly what you need. By the way, if you need to shut everybody off in a hurry, oh, you've got this lovely handy panty uh, stop, uh, standby button uh, sitting right there. Another item we have over here, uh, this is um, not necessarily unique to all airplanes, but you do have a yaw damper. Uh, this is turned on separate from the rest of the autopilot systems. A lot of aircraft with yaw dampers, uh, you can actually activate them you know, individually, or you can actually have them automatically coupled to the autopilot. For us, it's a separate switch. Uh, the yaw damper, basically, all that's going to do is it's going to try to dampen this motion of the aircraft that I'm doing with my head right here. Um, another thing you notice is, see how this is flashing right now? This is telling us that we have 1,000 feet to go before we strike our target altitude. All right, with all those things out of the way, uh, the one, we're going to go ahead and uh, play around with the automatic pilot a little bit to kind of demonstrate sort of what its functionality does. So first things first, uh, because we are on altitude select mode, uh, you can see as we start progressing towards our desired altitude, the aircraft is going to automatically level itself off, and we're going to go ahead and uh, reach that particular altitude. One thing that's really, really neat is if you actually look down here on the FMS, uh, you can see that it actually switched itself over automatically. I'm actually going to come over here real quick. I'll go ahead and flip on the target because, you know, why not? They, you know, they, we paid for the expensive ground mapping technology. We might as well take advantage of it. Of course, the tilt of the radar is up so high right now, we're not going to see anything on the ground anyway. Oh, well. But you notice how uh, we've leveled ourselves off at 12,000 feet, and you also notice that our speed is coming up very, very quickly. Uh, the reason this is uh, going to start racing away on us very, very quickly is on account of the fact we have no auto throttle on this aircraft. Uh, we actually have a manual, but we have uh, sort of like an engine limiter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over the switch real quickly, and I'm going to go 
and switch it over to the cruise setting. Now the cruise setting, uh, what you're going to notice is the aircraft is immediately going to start stepping up its RPM up to uh, pretty high. It's actually going to go right to the tippy top of 100. Uh, one of the things that I actually gave, somebody gave me a really good tip on was actually leaving it in climb mode rather than switching it to cruise mode. Now, if you just allow this to continue, and uh, this is one of those things that uh, really, really surprises pilots here, if you just let it rip along, it's going to happily rip along, and it's going to easily exceed you 240 knots here. Uh, you notice, by the way, this allows me to set my target speed. So if I crank this up to 240 knots, as you can see indicated up here on the top left, it's going to zip right up to 240 knots, and the engine's not going to care. So one of the things you have to remember is that uh, you have to really kind of pay attention to that part of the flight here. Um, our cruise speed on this one is typically 240, but we do need to actually manually set that rather than stop paying attention to it. A lot of people who are used to like your Airbus or used to Boeing and stuff like that, you just kind of set it and forget it once you get the auto throttle all squared away. But that little detail is going to cause us to have one extra thing to do every single time we do it. Now, people always ask me, oh, what's a good power setting? You know, can you give me a recommendation? Uh, I usually set it to about 80. By the way, you're going to notice this is switched to man instead of notch. And I'm just going to back it down just a little bit. We don't need lots of thrust here, especially once you start kind of playing around with it. Yeah, it looks pretty good right there. Eh, just a couple more up. Eh, tap it a few more times. And eh, that's going to be uh, maybe a little low. Eh, see, I don't want to go to notch mode because notch is a pretty wide power setting there. All right, so keep in mind. All right, let's do some fun. So the first things we're going to see is what happens when you shut off your current navigational mode. Now I notice I'm coming up on Gardner right here. Let's say your traffic control says, hey, uh, do you mind uh, taking a turn to 270? I say, sure, we'll do 270. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my heading selector. I'm going to select the heading that I wish to go on to just like that. I'm going to press the HDG button. Now when I press heading select, it's not like a Boeing where you just mash it a bunch of times and it does heading hold versus heading select, two different options on a Boeing. It's just going to take whatever the current heading is that I had. So if they call me up and say, uh, actually make that 300, the nice thing is once I'm in heading hold mode, I can just come in here and I can go ahead and I'll wheel the mouse and set it to whatever desired heading. In this case, you can see very clearly we've selected 300 degrees and the aircraft is going to happily head towards 300 degrees without stressing itself out too, too much here. Uh, as you notice, by the way, my airspeed is starting to creep up because I'm losing a little tiny bit of altitude. So like I said, I can't say this enough. Take your time and double check the power settings uh, at your own risk here, not setting them correctly. So I'm just going to pop it into man mode and reduce power just a tiny bit so that uh, we don't have to stress about that too much. So now we're on our 300 heading and proceeding. Let's say they go ahead and call us up and say, uh, descend and maintain 11,000 feet. All right, we could do that. So what we do now is we come to the altitude selector and we go ahead and crank it and we check our new selected height. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you can see that. So you can see now that 11,000 feet is selected, but our aircraft is not descending it to 11,000 feet. Uh, the reason it won't is we have to tell it how to get there. So let's say we want to go ahead and uh, start our descent. So we have a couple different choices. We have IAS, which is going to hold a constant speed. We have VS, which is going to hold a constant vertical speed. And then we have VNAV, which is basically going to act as a descent auto tool. Uh, VNAV is very, very useful for approaches. We're not going to look at that today, only on account of the fact that it's just going to make things complicated for us, not in a good way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press the VS button. Now, when I press that, you'll notice zero has been selected here. We've been dialed in our VS. If we were already descending and we pressed VS, it would hold our current VS. Notice, by the way, VS is now the selected mode and altitude select is the armed mode. So if I come like this and I tap this five, you'll now notice we're starting to descend at 500 feet per minute. Now, the interesting thing here is you probably observe my airspeed is slowly creeping back up again. I can't say this enough. Pay attention to your speed when you start your descents. Um, otherwise, you will easily overspeed this aircraft. It takes very, very little. Uh, let's say air traffic control calls us back and says, uh, could you actually uh, take that turn? Uh, bring it all the way to uh, one eight, uh, go uh, nine or zero. And you're like, I wish you would have told us a minute ago because I would have got that set up before I started fitting with everything. All right, let's crank this sucker over. Da, 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 da. Yeah. So in the real world, everybody's like, oh, is it easier to control heading bugs? No. <laughs> It isn't. As a matter of fact, the real world can have it worse for controlling heading bugs. They can be even slower than that. So we proceed our descent. Um, air traffic control gives us a quick ring and uh, says, um, could you hold that altitude? You're like, okay. So all we have to do is run up here and press the alt button, which causes the aircraft to immediately lock onto the altitude I selected. Now, one thing I'm really impressed with with this particular aircraft is you'll notice when I selected that, it holds that altitude without changing our target altitude. So now if we wanted to continue our descent, we'd have to select what descent mode we actually want to use. Now, one of the cool things is we have a pre-selected airspeed of 240 here. So this is a great time to see the indicated airspeed mode. Now, if I reach over here and press IAS, you'll notice that altitude is still armed, but we're in IAS mode. So what's going to happen is the aircraft is going to pitch to try to maintain the speed we select. 
Now, if I'm dangerous, I could set this up to 245 knots. And what the aircraft will do is it'll push its nose over, attempting to get to 245 knots by pitch alone. Now, one of the things you gotta watch out for is you can see that was such a short climb here that our altitude warning immediately popped on because we've already acquired our 11,000 feet here. So what's gonna happen, of course, is the aircraft is now going to level itself off. It's not gonna maintain 240 because remember, we didn't do a power change here, so that's gonna happen. Now, let's say air traffic control calls us back up and says, I proceed on course. You're like, proceed on course. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my new heading to 120, which is gonna cross this line well, and I'm just gonna press the navigational hold button. Note with navigational hold, we have to be pretty close to the target that we actually want to navigate onto, hence my uh, time taken to kind of get us lined up here. Uh, the other thing you need to keep in mind is, is whatever source has been selected will happen. Now, we get a call from air traffic control. Uh, they say uh, climb and maintain 12,000. <sighs> okay, climb and maintain 12,000, red 64. So you come up here and say 12,000. Now, let's say I want to go ahead and uh, get there, and I want to get there in a hurry. So I'm going to press my VS button, and I'm going to go ahead and crank this thing, and I'm going to go all the way up to 2,000 feet per minute. I'm also going to go ahead and take my, my throttle, and I'm going to switch it up to notch mode. If I really want to get up in a hurry, I can actually set it up to what they call ramp mode. Warning. Whoa, oh, I had ramp for a second. There's ramp. And that should get us basically as much as I can get out of this thing in a climb. Now, the interesting thing here is uh, it didn't take us very long to get to 12,000 feet. So as soon as that happened, of course, you can see I'm overpowering the airplane here. I'm actually going to have to pull my throttle back before I do any damage here. And um, you'll notice that that was a vertical speed, but we sucked a lot of energy out of the aircraft climbing that aggressively. So remember, everything you've changed, we now have to go back and readjust in order to make that actually happen. So we're getting close to our position here. You can see I did a pretty good job of doing a little bit of an air donut here lining this up. And now we're heading into Gardner Mass. So what they would do, of course, and uh, normally we're actually very, very close to our particular destination here. You can see this thing is uh, starting to scramble a little bit, kind of uh, getting us all relined up here, is uh, let's say they go ahead and uh, give us a call and they ask us to hold a particular VOR. You sit there going, oh, really? And then, of course, we have to play the VOR game. They call us and they say, uh, would you be so kind as to uh, go ahead and uh, they would never say that, by the way. They just give you the order. They say, could you uh, take Gardner Mass and uh, go ahead and follow that along the uh, Tango 314 here? So you take a look real quick and that works out to be about 240 degrees. So we're going to have to be able to select the radial we want and select this particular frequency of 110.6. So we'll go pop over uh, real quick back to our piece here and we'll get that all queued up. Now our navigational radio on this one is a little involved to get to. Uh, it's just uh, kind of one of the, uh, the nature of the beast as they uh, kind of like to say. We have a direct two options, our performance, we have our pages here, we have RMS, and there is our lovely radio function. So you can see we have all of our different components. I'm gonna press the nav and here is everything we need for our radios. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 110.6. Uh, we can actually do decimal six here. And I'm gonna go ahead and notice on automatic mode, I'm actually gonna overwrite it and select 110.6. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, pre-select my new altitude because I actually gotta start my descent pretty soon. I'm actually gonna come down to, it's gonna be 2,500 feet because I can see my top of descent's already listed there on the page. So I'm gonna kind of have to do 50 things at once here. Boop, boop. That looks pretty good to me. So now what we have to do is we have to tell the computer we actually want to use a different navigational source. Now, one of the things you have to be really careful for is uh, if you come down here, you've got all your different buttons for bearings. Don't get your bearings confused with your selected course. Uh, do that in your own peril there. Uh, that's kind of that's going to end poorly for you. By the way, notice our airspeed is uh, snuck back on, up, up on us. It's just the way this aircraft works. You just have to be mindful. So we're going to do 10 things at once. I'm going to go ahead and press indicated airspeed hold. I'm actually going to pull all the way to idle, which is going to get us descending in a hurry. And now, of course, I'm going to switch my navigational source. Uh, like I was mentioning before, before you switch navigational source, I actually recommend you go to heading hold mode, switch the navigational source. And now, of course, we have the ability to adjust the course any which way that we need to do it. Now, the course knob is this one. The heading knob is this one. So as we mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, we want to follow. They called us up and they said they want us to go on the 240. So we're just going to sit here and crank this thing until we get over to 240. Note that we're no longer in FMS hold mode. So let's go ahead and put that uh, radio right there. I'm going to come back to nav and I'm going to mash that button. Now, it's important to note, and you can see this down here, if I look at my modes, heading select is on, VOR is armed. The reason this is armed is we have not actually gotten that particular radial of that particular VOR. If we actually want to do that, we're going to have to turn our aircraft pretty substantially to actually intersect that VOR. Um, if we miss that step, of course, you're going to have issues. Now, another thing you probably observe is the fact that we're descending at something like 5,000 feet per minute right now. Uh, the reason we are is we're idle doing 240. That's a pretty substantial drop there. 
Uh, we want to be a little bit more polite to our passengers, of course. We can leave about 50% power in, and that's going to give you a much slower descent. But of course, look at that, look at that, look at that. See how close that was? We almost oversped the aircraft because the autopilot could not keep up with us. So let's go ahead and uh, speed up time a teeny tiny bit. Do, 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 and we're going to go find that 210 radio. Or 240 radio, my bad. Just kind of getting bounced. Nothing too excessive here. There we go. Captured this. Now, one of the interesting things here, and I find this one always kind of fun, is you'll have an issue where uh, you know, you've got it set to a particular mode. It'll say that it has acquired a particular hover radius, but you'll notice that this needle will be backwards. Uh, this is actually one of those fun little things that uh, you're going to see from time to time, like, depending on how this is set up. We've actually seen this bug before in other aircraft. Now, unfortunately for us, uh, when we put that in this situation, if I were to actually make an adjustment to my course, uh, for example, if I you know, start cranking this thing, or something like that. You'll notice that uh, this needle happily kind of cruises around. You'll notice that uh, my little CDI will uh, pretty much stay paused. I'm gonna go confirm real quickly. Ah, I knew it. Nope, never mind. I'm gonna go keep cranking that thing around, and you're gonna notice this needle does not seem to be moving very successfully. Uh, we've actually seen this bug before on another aircraft where it basically reverse captures the uh, VOR setting here and uh, makes it a little bit difficult to try to actually dial this in. Uh, one of the nice things is, is if you do have external instruments, your external instruments are still gonna work properly. So I'm actually locked on right there to uh, the 240, but you'll actually notice that this entire thing is backwards. So uh, one of the bugs that you have to watch out for is if you are gonna operate on VOR, have an external instrument, otherwise this needle will just taunt you for a long period of time. So this is it for this video. Our next video, of course, we're going to take a look at landing this thing. Uh, landing this aircraft, it's not particularly challenging. It's just a little different. And uh, you'll see exactly what I mean when we do it. Enjoy.